Um, he's with us in July last year, as we can see there. He came with shock and hypoxic respiratory failure. He wasn't intubated at this case, uh, stage, but he was really quite sick. And he'd been treated for about 24 hours as a community-acquired pneumonia. And this is his echo. Uh, so I think it's A2P2 that I can see um, of the mitral valve scallops. The left atrium is enlarged. Um, the ventricle is impaired and... There seems to be it's about all I can see. The, the aorta doesn't seem dilated. Yeah, look, just look at the ventricle a bit more, chat, and see whether you actually think it's impaired. No, I actually don't think it's impaired. I was I couldn't see the inter inside margin of the inter yes in, of the um interventricular septum, and now I can um see it better. Yeah, just get used to calling that antraceptum, chat. Antrace yeah. They're actually thickening pretty well, aren't they? It almost looks yeah. maybe like it's dynamic. Really per dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, do you see anything wrong with the mitral valve? It's going really fast, and I just need to slow it down and look at the ECG, yeah. but I feel like he probably is getting a bit of SAM, actually. Uh yeah, maybe it's really quite hard and I'm purposefully not showing you any colour, but can you see that little structure there just flicking through? There. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's really quite subtle. But for me, this case is all about good 2D interrogation. You know, when we put colour on this, you could, he, he actually didn't have classic severe, you know, f um, regurgitant flow filling the whole left atrium. Because often with, and it, I'll end up showing you what it is, but um, cause, but what he did have is something called uh, colour Doppler splay, where he just had this really sort of earliest um, colour across his mitral valve. So he didn't have big colour jets filling the whole left atrium. And you can see how on a focused echo, which is what he had initially, this abnormality here can be missed. Right. And it's, it's, it's easy to do when you're just focusing on other things and, and doing a focused echo. But can you um, tell me the scallops that we can see here um, and what you think of the LV function here? Sorry, this one's not looping, but um, this is a zoomed in uh, apical four chamber. So what scallops would we normally see for the mitral valve on the four chamber? So I think now you can see a point here. Um, so that's P1. And then you can see a a one, and I think you can see a bit of a two. Yeah, it might maybe China. I it's I find it always hard, but I guess the textbook is like this is usually a two a three p one. Um, but a maybe a two a two um a two a three p one. Can you mm -hmm. notice any abnormality here in that mitral? So the LV function, I think, is very normal. In fact, I think it's hyperdynamic, having looked at these ones. Um, there is something flicking into the right, into the left atrium, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. There. And I actually think the um, the way that I'm looking at it now, I actually think the posterior leaflet might be prolapsing yeah. with the with the yeah. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. tell if it's an artifact or not on my resolution of my screen, but yeah well this is my this is my terrible imaging see i haven't even got the focal point there the gains up it's all terrible <laughs> but um, and and i guess the learning point for me with this case which is what i always say now whenever you see a hyper dynamic left ventricle you've got to explain it right so yeah. it's either because the patient has is vasoplegic and they've got a terribly low svr for whatever reason sepsis i guess is the most common thing post bypass and thing like that but also mm -hmm. don't forget don't forget mitral valve pathology and severe yeah. You've got to explain that, um, or a VSD, right? Um, yeah. We, you know, um, so it's for me, it's yeah, vasoplegia for whatever cause, significant mitral regurge or or a shunt. If you yeah. see, so you need to look for those three things, and and you'll probably get to it most of the time. All right. So the next, I might just quickly run through these. What leaflets would we see here in this three chamber again? My terrible imaging. But what would these usually be? And I can actually see it here, probably a bit more. Uh, 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 I think Which you can chamber? see. Yeah. Um. A A one P. Uh, sorry. A two P two. Yeah. Very nice. And you see how just the P two leaflet just looks. Yeah. See something flicking in the left atrium. Yeah. 
and again you know this just doesn't look just doesn't look right does it just doesn't look right um this mitral valve and you've got a um, hyperdynamic LV. All right, so we went to toe. Um, we introverted him and did a toe, and this is uh, what we can see. So, what are we looking at here, uh, maybe Ravi? And what sc what scallops can we see? It's a bit of a trick question. Yeah, so this is a mid mid esophageal four or five chamber view. Yeah, somewhere in between, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And uh, what we can see is. Uh, the posterior mitral leaflet, so that could be the P1. That is, it looks like uh, it's ballooning into the LA, but I can see the tip flailing as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and because we're somewhere in between, and I'm just going to show you guys some pictures of how I remember the scallops, because we're somewhere in between a, um, a four and a five chamber, it's difficult to know whether we're looking at P1 plus or minus P2 um, and A1 plus or minus A2, because um, you're in that in-between phase, right? But whatever... It's got, and so you need more views essentially to know whether you're what exactly what scallop you're dealing with. I guess the most common um, scallop to to flail and prolapse is P two, isn't it? Um, and that's you can see it's absolutely pointing into the left atrium. Um, so that is a flail. Okay, yeah. so we've got flail there um, of that of that scallop, and it could be that the adjacent scallop to it. So this might be P one that we're catching, which is prolapsed, but then P two is flailing is flailing in it's it's really hard to tell and we, we definitely need more more views to interrogate that but this is how i learn and it's from a, and i can share this with you it's the bernstein tour protocol the simplified one you might have seen it i think it's excellent um and i'm just gonna show you talk you through how i um uh, know the scallops in in when i'm doing tours so imagine that this is Imagine that the toe probe is 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 behind here, right? So this is where my toe probe is. It's coming down the esophagus, and if I, if I stop it here, this is what is in front of me. Okay, so that that's what the toe probe is seeing. So that when it puts out its ultrasound beam, this is what it's looking at. So therefore, and you can see how, and this is it in a path like a, a you know a cad cadaveric specimen. And can you see how the mitral valve it sort of looks like that crescent? It looks like a lunar, like a moon, right? So you've got the all the posterior scallops, they look like a, a lunar, a crescent moon. And so this is how it's aligned. So then you can you can work out where you're at with um when you're at zero degrees, therefore, because it's arranged this way. Right. So you just need to kind of once you have it in your mind that this is how the mitral valve looks at zero degrees of, as we're looking onto it. As soon as we go down to our midesophageal four chamber, this is the orientation that we're in. Right. So at zero degrees, I'm cutting through A, A2, P2. Yeah. And I'm going to come on to what then what then we will see as I move to 60 to one to 90 to 120. But at zero degrees. All I'm cutting through when I get to my midesophageal four chamber without the aortic valve in it, because I'm if I moved, if I pulled my probe up and had aortic valve in, I'd be cutting through A1, P1, right? Because I've just got zero on my omniplane. And then if I push my probe down a little bit more, I'm going to cut through A3, P3, right? So by just staying at zero, going to your midesophageal four chamber, by moving up and down, I can actually trace the whole of the, the mitral scallops. So you can see that in this next one here. So this is me coming down. I haven't done anything apart from go to about 40 centimeters, right? Stayed at zero degrees and I'm cutting through A2, P2. And if I pull my probe out a centimeter or so until I get the aortic valve in, because now I'm going to cut through this, I'm going to cut through a P1, A1. So can you see how on that patient I just showed you, we, it's really hard to tell whether you're seeing P, P1 or P2, because it was kind of in between those things. Okay, that's, um, I think those scallops are quite easy to remember, but the hard, yeah, and as we push in, you know, you push in some more, you get A3, P3. So th those are quite easy to remember, I think. And that tells you in that zero degree plane, tells you whether you've got an anterior leaflet problem or a posterior leaflet problem, but it doesn't 
really tell you with clarity what scallop it is. And that's why we need to um, use our Omniplane and, and 3D, I suppose. But just I think before you move on to 3D, you absolutely need to understand how to do it with 2D and Multiplane. So then as we come around to 60 degrees, can you see how now I'm changing my Omniplane to 60? Therefore, I'm going to be cut so this is our bicomishural view, right? So I'm going to be cutting through P3, A2, and P1. All right, so there, that's what I'm cutting through as I'm coming to 60 degrees. P1, A2, P3. And I'm sure you'll be familiar with sort of that. That's how it looks on, on toe. Now, if I... And what I often do here is I'll rotate to the patient's left and that will give me P1, P2, P3. And the, re the way that I know that I've moved from that bi classic bicomishural to all of the posteriors is I can't see coaptation anymore. So therefore I know that all what I'm seeing is I move to the patient's left-hand side, right? So just slight rotation to the patient's left. I know that I'm seeing P1, P2, P3. And then the same if I just rotate slightly to the patient's right, I'm seeing A1, A2, A3 mainly. So you can you can fan through at 60 degrees and get a feel for what you're dealing with there as well. Um, and then we move on to our 90 degrees, right? So at 90 degrees, I've come through here. So if you all you need to remember is this picture here. This is really key. And mainly what the AO, what the mitral valve looks like. And just remember the crescent moon is your posterior leaflet. Um and that's how it's sort of cutting through. So at 90 degrees, I'm going to be going through A1, A2, A3, and a little bit of P3. Yes, if you could start, Chris, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, sorry, guys, I've just got a, a toll list coming up now. And you can see that here as well. A1, A2, A3, P3. All right, so that's in your... And see how we're getting a little bit of coronary sinus there next to P3 here. So anything that's... So if you see coronary sinus, your scallops have got to be A3 or P3. Whereas if you see appendage, your scallops are always going to be A1 or P1. So that's a nice little uh, trick as well. I think if you remember the way that this is laid out and where you're rotating your omniplane, you can easily work out the scallops. And sometimes as I'm when I'm doing a tour, I'll actually draw this on the board, especially when I'm teaching. Because um, if, you, if you know that's, that's what you're starting at, then you can work out with your omniplane what, what you're going to cut through. And then coming to 120, 120 is really easy, right? Because all you're cutting through there is A2, P2. So the 120 one is really quite easy to remember. And again, if you rotate <clears throat> to the patient's <coughs> left, you're going to cut through A1, P1. And if you cut to, look, uh, rotate to the patient's right when you're in the 120, you're going to cut through A3, P3. Right. And I guess, and that's what we can see, can't we, in the 120 long axis view. Um, and just as you were saying, Ravi, right coronary, and then it's difficult to know whether that's non or left, and you just need to uh, fan through that and biplane it and see what you're cutting through. Um, so with that in mind, I might just finish off in the last five sec uh, 10 seconds with a spot. I just want you to tell me what scallops we're looking at. Any of you can shout it out. So I'm going to put my pointer here and it's difficult. And if you say, I think it's this, but it's really hard to tell with certainty, I'd want to look at it in more veins. That's fine. So this is mid, mid esophageal poor chamber. So A to P2, I would say. Very nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult to know whether there's going to be a little bit of P1 in there because we're maybe just getting a little bit of aorta, but yeah, probably that, isn't it? And what do you think of the, of the, is there any abnormality here, Ravi? So there seems to be, a, you know, the posterior one is prolapsing. Very nice. Absolutely. Because, yeah, beyond the plane of the annulus and it's still convex. Very nice. Can you, can you appreciate that, Robert, as well? I'll just slow that down. You see that? You see yeah. how the tip, the tip is still pointing downwards um, rather than pointing up into the, into the atrium. So it's we prolapse there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So based on that, what direction is the mitral regurg going to be? Anterior. Very towards nice. the towards the left side of the screen. Very nice. Very nice. And you already know because you've got that significant two D abnormality that you're going to be dealing with severe mitral regurg, right? So we can see yeah. often 
you know, with eccentric jets, you don't see that beautiful, um, you know, the whole left atrium doesn't fill with color because we have that sort of um, eccentricity to it. And, and that can be underestimated, you know, if you only look at the color in the receiving chamber. Um, and the key thing to look at absolutely is look for flow convergence. Right, so this this is really important. So if we see that proximal flow convergence, we know that we're dealing with at least moderate, you know, if not um, at least moderate mitral regurg. That combined with the the two D defect, the prolapse severe, but we'd we'd obviously want to um, you know quantitate that a little bit more, I suppose. Um, so so nice. So always try to predict where you think the color jet's going to be based on your two D anatomy. Um, so what are we dealing with here? So we're in the two chamber, so 90 degrees. What what leaflets are we looking at here? So remember, we've got that sort of crescent shape, um, posterior P1, P2, P3, and then that big sort of anterior leaflet abutted to it to make a full moon. And we're at 90 degrees. So I think this is P2, P3, A1, right? No, this is 90. This is not our bicommissure rule. This is oh, 90. 90. I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. So remember, we've we've got that. I don't know whether this moon thing only seems to work for me, but remember, we've got that sort of the moon, I like guess, of P1, P2, P3. Then we've got all of the aortic valve, and I'm cutting through at 90 degrees, right? So I'm of the anterior leaflet. So I'm going to cut through most of the anterior leaflet and just a little bit of P3. Right, because yeah. that's 90 degrees. So we've got um, A1, A2, A3, E3, oh. 90 degrees. Emma, if, if you're not looking at the left atrial appendage, then we assume that it's slightly rotated rightwards. Yeah, it probably does need to be. You're right, Ravi. So we can see here coronary sinus. Okay, yeah, yeah. the coronary sinus is always with P3. And then the appendage, you've got a little bit of circumflex there. The appendage is here somewhere. Um, yeah, you just need to, probably you're going to see the appendage more between sort of 40 to 70. It depends, obviously. And then that leftward rotation, you're absolutely right. It's that sort of leftward rotation to rotate fully um, in the appendage, which you could open out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... This one, again, what are we looking at here? This is the nice sort of, you know, 120 to 130, the long axis view. Um, what what valves are we, what leaf, what scallops are we looking at here? So remember, we've come around to 120 now with our, with our moon. A2, P2. Yeah, 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 nice. So I think um, as you're, when you're performing toes, just always, just go through this structure. So you're going to start 0, 60, 90, 120. And as you go through those four, just say, that's what a leaf I'm looking at. Just say it over and over again, and then it'll just become sort of brainstem level. And then you'll be able to move from the classic views to sort of more off-axis views and still, still know what you're looking at. And I still need to remind myself sometimes. I can't always remember. Um, yeah, so again, we're, we're seeing that P2 fl uh, prolapse slash flail. Um, and again, that lovely anteriorly directed eccentric jet with that massive proximal flow convergence. Um, and I was going to spend a little bit, on, and then in 3D, um, which we all sort of cheat with now, don't we? Because it's quite easy to do this on the new fancy machines. But we can see um, what we have with 3D. Always your aorta at the 12 o'clock position. Um, antralateral commissure, posterior medial commissure. And then we've got this on FAS or surgeon's view. Um, and what we can see, so appendage is here, right? So we've got A1, A2, A3, P1, P2, P3. And this is your classic view, your on fast view. And we've got this prolapsing. Can you see that? That prolapsing P2 just coming through there. Um, and then we can pop some color on. And it's again showing that regurgitant jet coming through that prolapse there. Um, and this is that patient, you know, the patient that we started with, the guy with the pneumonia that ended up having this um, flail. Um, you can see here a P2 flail just, just sort of coming through, maybe a little bit of P1 prolapse as well, just coming through, but the cordae is sort of ripped off and that's flailing through into his left atrium. Um, and that was that. Can you see how you could... I don't know. I feel like you could easily miss this, like, you know, the regurge, you wouldn't, but like, 
yeah well i guess you could but you see how it doesn't look that impressive in the left atrium so really key to look at where your 2d defect is which is obviously easy to spot so you know you're going to be dealing with severe mr but well, i guess my just my little key take home is always look for that proximal flow convergence um really important for eccentric jets to make sure you're not going to underestimate them i was going to talk to you Pisa and how we could do that and when not to do it and caveats and things like that but i'll talk about that another time um and what's this last final final one because i've gone way over i talk far too much but what can we what can we see here what is this and what's it telling us it's that same patient the one with the p2 prolapse sorry i'm going to move that off there yeah is that the pulmonary vein very nice Ravi. yeah well, yeah flow reversal very nice very nice so when so can you all see that so i might just go through so this is our s wave this is normally should be above the baseline right going into the left atrium during systole but it's completely reversing i'm going back into the pulmonary veins during systole that's why he was in pulmonary he was in pulmonary edema and it was actually unilateral pulmonary edema um and then in diastole it's it's obviously coming towards the baseline and then we've got this little ar which is normal so this is our ar reversal which is which is quite normal but this systolic flow reversal is very abnormal and you only see that in mitral regurg in diastolic dysfunction obviously we can get systolic blunting and in moderate mitral regurg we can get systolic blunting because uh, normally your s wave is bigger than your d right in most most people but in young fit, fit athletes you can get blunting of your s wave um but if you see the systolic flow reversal, that's severe MR. Um, so that's that's a nice uh, way to again talking about, you know, not just relying on, never just relying on subjective and color assessment and two D, putting everything together for severity of MR and always use these things. Okay, so how much can I answer with two D? Um, how much can I answer with color? Um, what can I use for with pulse wave? What can I use with continuous wave? And then. Ideally, you know, it's not always possible in our patient group is in the critically ill, but quantitative measures. So if you're seeing, you know, disrupted mitral apparatus, just like I've shown you there, or sort of uh, down and upstream effects of your remodeling um, with color Doppler, obviously just be mindful of the, you know, needing to hit the posterior wall of greater than 40% of your LA size. You don't always see that because it's about your momentum. Um, and sometimes with those quander effects, the, the, um, you don't always see that. Beta contract is really quite useful, so more than seven millimeters because it's less flow dependent. It's quite easy to get. And then the PISA radius, um, you can use this as called like the easy PISA method or the simplified PISA method. If you do it correctly on a hollow systolic hemispheric jet, um, you know, in the right time, maybe you can use this PISA radius of more than one. Um, just as again a little marker that we're dealing with severe and then with pulse wave doppler um s wave reversal or blunting but definitely s wave reversal severe and also your e wave velocity being more than 1.5 through your mitral inflow um is again supportive nothing nothing in isolation is is um, to be is obviously you can't hang your hat on one thing and then continuous wave doppler we're obviously going to see that really dense uh, signal that's often triangular especially if it's acute severe mr because we get that rapid pressure equalization and then again for your exam you do need to kind of know some of these numbers so your effective regurgitant orifice area of more than 0.44 centimeters squared um, a volume mr volume of more than 60 and a fraction of mr of more than 50 percent um and yeah it's just a case of going through the guidelines and seeing those numbers um i think we'll leave it there guys but thanks um thanks very much for joining and any any we might just leave it there i might just uh, stop recording uh for now if you learned something hit like and subscribe to our channel for more videos uploaded weekly for bite-sized versions, follow us on Twitter at Echo Nepean and check out the tutorials. Or head over to our websites for the latest hands-on courses. Links in the channel banner. And thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.